And today we're gonna to be checking out the John Mayer Silver Sky SE. Let's start with the easy stuff. The gig bag uh, that comes with it. As you can see, they went old school. This is the, uh, I remember when the SE bags were gray like this. So the SE bag is uh, a very nice bag, as we know, very nicely padded gel pack inserts right here. And of course, my favorite thing about all SE gig bags is that in this Velcro pocket is your hanger to hang it in your closet or wherever you like on the back of a door. Then we open up the gig bag and what do you see? A very, very minimal pack here. We're gonna have the tremolo arm, the adjustment uh, wrench uh, for, the, um, uh, for the truss rod, and of course, an Allen wrench for the saddles on the guitar. So that's pretty straightforward. I'm gonna go ahead and remove the tremolo arm from that. The tremolo arm is identical to what you would see on the core model. It's a push-in style tremolo arm. Let's go ahead and install this. And you see it's a compression fit. There's a, a plastic ring around the tremolo arm and that uh, Allen wrench that I showed you earlier will adjust the tremolo arm if you wanna make this tight or loose, uh, if you want it to kind of like just kind of get out of your way or if you want it to stay in a certain position. Also, because it's compression fit and not screwing, you can adjust the height of this. Now, this is nothing new, this is exactly like the core. And they come in four new colors. They come in dragon fruit, moon white, stone blue, and evergreen. This guitar is uh, about eight pounds, one ounce. So it's not as light as uh, some of the John Mayer core models have been. Now I've, uh, I've held so many of the core models and they're really consistent, consistently light. And this is not a heavy guitar by any means, but uh, right away I, I can feel that it's just a little heavier than what I remember all the cores being. This body is poplar, uh, which is different than the core, as, as you know. And uh, there's a ton of reasons why they probably did that. Could have been a cost saving thing. It could have been a cost saving because of machining and tooling time. Maybe it's just easier on the tooling for the softer piece of wood. It could have been a, a purposeful decision from John Mayer. I'm sure he's gonna do a video and explain the decisions and why they made what they made. I can only speculate at this point as my video will be as made before all that stuff comes out. So what I'll tell you is, uh, I personally have no preference. I wouldn't care if this was basswood. As long as the guitar is not nine pounds, that's all I care about. And how they get it that way is, is fine by me. What we don't know is it says solid poplar. It doesn't explain if it's two pieces, three pieces. And of course it's painted, so we don't know. Uh, I have no idea. I'm gonna guess it's a two piece body. Based on the price, it's not an in inexpensive guitar by any means. This guitar is $849 US as of filming the video. And so that puts it squarely exactly at what a made in Mexico uh, Stratocaster is going to be at. So there are, they are priced to fight. Another thing to point out is the SE has a rosewood fretboard, which is a very nice choice. I'm glad they went with that. I was very shocked. And I think a lot of you are shocked uh, as well by how many of the specifications they kept on the SE. As we know, this is very common in the guitar industry to do really dumbed down versions for the economic version. Uh, where, you know, whether that be uh, uh, quality components change out, but more importantly, just the carves are slightly different, the look is slightly different, and the little details are slightly different. This, I'm happy to say, they kept a crap ton of the original details. So the knobs look exactly like the core knobs. The switch tip, the flat switch tip, the PRS switch tip is exactly like the core. Now, one thing that's close, but not exactly the same is the bridge. The USA made Silver Sky has a six screw tremolo where the new one looks exactly like the Mark Letiri two screw tremolo. All I care about is if the guitar stays in tune and we'll check that. And that, that to me is gonna be more about the attention, the detail, the nut, and the fit and finish overall the guitar that keeps the guitar in tune than it is to whether or not it has six screws or two points uh, of, of, to, for the bridge to sit on. The output jack plate is of course that, that plate that we're used to seeing now where it looks like the Fender plate that's flat, but it's classier version of what Fender has put out. So again, they stuck with that, very, very nice. Uh, all of the cars look identical. Uh, there's nothing to seem that's out of place. The bridge, uh, the back plate, the neck plate looks identical, including on how it even kind of reads. It says SE in big letters right here, of course, letting you know you have the, the import version. However, aesthetically though, very, very nice. And all the fit and finish details on this guitar are very nice. And uh, I wanna say that's because this guitar is made by Cortec. And as we all know, Cortec makes like most of the guitars in the world. Okay, so now we gotta talk about the pickups and they're called the 635 JMS. S usually implies it's part of the SE series. And they are different than the core model. And I'll explain why and how in the geeky stuff. 
Now let's take a look at the control layout. You have the five-way selector, which we'll go over in the sound demo. So then you have a master volume. Your second knob is a tone control dedicated to the bridge pickup. And the third knob is a tone control dedicated to your neck and middle pickups. Then we get to the neck. And the neck carve is actually considered, or is called the John Mayer neck carve. Of course, in the geeky section, we'll do the measurements and compare the measurements to the John Mayer's we've, we've uh, spec'd out. But I mean, just first-hand impression, I think it's better. <laughs> Here's what I'm gonna tell you it's better. First, I like the satin uh, finish. It is a finished neck. It's, uh, a lot of people are probably gonna tell you it's an unfinished neck. There seems to be some kind of satin finish on this. My guess is it was probably shot with an extremely thin coat of polyurethane and then sanded. So to your hand, it's gonna feel like a natural feeling neck, which is good. It is the two piece neck that we've seen on the core model. The tuning keys on the SE look identical to the original model, except for they are not locking keys. However, here's where I, again, I love the neck uh, uh, because uh, they using, they're using the PRS style uh, nut instead of fender style nut where it's thin. I like the PRS style nut. This says it's synthetic bone. If I read synthetic bone in the ad copy, I'm going to uh, kind of interpret that as it's a very hard type plastic or resin and it's gonna be like something like tusk, maybe corian, some kind of synthetic material that is gonna have the properties of bone. That's fine. Again, we'll check the nut and the stability of tuning and that will tell us everything. We don't need to know anything else. Truss rod cover. Instead of having the dog tag styled inset, the aluminum truss rod cover that you saw on the Silver Sky USA version, this version has the same truss rod cover you see on all PRSs, except for they painted it silver. I think it looks great. I don't prefer one or the other, but again, put in the comments if you're like, I can't believe they did that. It says SE on the headstock. That's the other thing I noticed. And then of course we get to the fretboard, which is the big change. Eight and a half inch radius fretboard. Uh, instead of the seven and a quarter radius fretboard that you see on the Silver Sky uh, uh, USA model. Now, eight and a half is a strange radius, but just so you guys know, I don't have an eight and a half inch radius gauge. So I used my regular gauges and nine and a half looks really close. So close that it's almost impossible to see any light underneath the spaces or even use a gap gauge to see a difference. Eight and a half is gonna feel very close to nine and a half. If you don't like the seven and a quarter uh, radius is too round for you, you feel like you're choking out if you lower the action when you do bends, uh, this is gonna be an improvement on that. If you love your USA Silver Sky and now you're like, oh, it's not the same neck radius, I think it's close enough to where you'll be like, oh, <laughs> it's a little different, but pretty close. If you absolutely do not like the seven and a quarter inch radius fretboard, you'll be like, this is an improvement. It has the plastic bird inlays and they're identical to the US ones. And it also has the 25 and a half inch scale length, just like the main USA one. Other than the two screws here versus having six, the SE stamp here on the headstock and this truss rod nut change out, which are all extremely subtle. On stage, I don't know if you'd be able to tell if this is the core USA priced unit or the import unit. So they did a very good job because it's one of those things that's nice is when you're buying a uh, more price point friendly instrument, you don't wanna feel like, you know, you, you're missing out on everything. <laughs> you know what I mean? You wanna feel like you got most of what you got. So let's get into the geekier stuff. When we're looking at the pickups, the bridge pickup is reading at 7.35K, where the middle pickup is reading at 7.27K, and the neck pickup is reading at, at 7.27K as well. How is that different than the USA one? The Silver Sky USA model is reading in at the bridge at 6.66, the middle at 6.66, and the neck is at 6.67. So it looks already like the SE pickups are a little hotter, may have a a little bit more punch to them. When we look at the neck thickness, the John Mayer Silver Sky SE is 21.56 millimeters thick at the first fret. The US model is 21.48 millimeters. The SE's 12 fret thickness is 24.12 millimeters, where the US one is 24.85, which means they are very close. The necks are going to feel very, very identical when it comes to how thick they feel. Now, when it comes to the neck shape, when we look at the American-made Silver Sky, it really shapes a lot like a 62 Strat. However, in contrast, even though the neck shape feels the same, you can definitely see it that it's not as wide as the USA-made neck, and the carve is a little bit more dramatic. So now let's take a look inside the cavity, and the first thing we see is they have shielding paint everywhere, and you can see the blue paint sticking through, which means they didn't put a lot of layers of it. There's a way to test if they did a good job. We can put the multimeter and see if it's we're getting conductivity. Setting it to ohms and using the probes to touch two points of contact, you would see some kind of reading. So it's obviously making a uh, connection and it's working. Now, if you look here, you'll see that they're using this uh, copper tape to touch all the screws and then ground that. They're running it like trails on a circuit board, like uh, for ground. Very common now. 
bag. You're seeing this more and more. They're using alpha pots, but they're using the larger alpha pots. And I don't have a problem with small alpha pots, but I like the feel of the bigger pots. I think when you turn them, you can feel the quality. The other thing they're using is Switchcraft style switch, which is nice. And when we go back and look at the original Silver Sky, you can see the pickups look pretty standard when it comes to how they're constructed. But the new ones have an interesting new design. Look at how they're using little posts in between the larger slugs, which is interesting because maybe they learned something or were inspired by their Vela pickups. Those are some of my favorite PRS pickups. So it looks like they're trying to do something new with this guitar. It probably has a different sound. Okay, so what I want to do now is some sound samples. I'm going to run this guitar through a Fender 65 Deluxe Reverb, biked up with a 57. So let's start with the neck position. This is the neck pickup right here. <laughs> And it sounds very full. That it's the one thing that you know this guitar to have the sound, which is a, a big sounding, full sounding single notes that have lots of sustain. go to the uh, fourth position. This is going to be your neck and middle. This is wired up exactly like the core model and of course uh, like a, a Fender Stratocaster. <laughs> That's really what this neck is for. This, the way the carve of this neck feels, the way the fretboard is, the way the guitar is set up, it just has that. The middle position. Now all the mids come in. You're gonna get that, what I call the nasal tones. Uh. Okay, position two, which is gonna be your bridge and middle position. Yeah, it's got that. What I like about this sound is that it obviously uh, really sweeps to the sweet spot of the, of the key range for me, where it's a. Let's go to the bridge now. The bridge is a little scary because it's always the brightest, it's always the harshest, and you do have tone, tone controls, and we can talk about that too. But you know, right now we just want to see how it sounds. It retains a lot of those mids. And again, not a lot of top end, high end on this, which is good. For a, a Strat style guitar, you know, they're just full of high end, <laughs> a lot of top end frequencies. So sometimes mellowing them out, mellowing them that out, you would use your tone controls. Uh, but this guitar, I don't need to eat it. Okay, so now what I want to do is we're going to check the stability of how it stays in tune. And this is pretty straightforward. I haven't done any setups or anything to it. It's uh, still how it came out of the box. <laughs> But keep in mind, this uh, bridge is against the body. That's how it came out of the box. So it's not floating by any means. So let's do a overdrive sound. Let's go ahead and put this to the bridge position. We'll start there. I'm using a, a Lawrence Petros LPD 68, which is a light overdrive. It's my favorite one. I'm running it in front of the Fender 65 Deluxe Reverb. And uh, here we go. <laughs> We're 
go position two, that's gonna be your bridge and your middle. You'll get a little bit more of a spank to it, I think. <laughs> to the middle position and I like that because I really like to get aggressive with the middle position on overdrive. <laughs> Let's go to the fourth position, which is uh, middle and neck. And of course, the neck position. thoughts on the guitar and uh, to give you some some thoughts on this so there is a couple things i want to tell you although i think the fit and finish on this guitar is perfect it's a fantastic instrument at 849 dollars there's nothing i would critique this instrument as having insufficient quality in any way that i've come across either by design or just by execution however what i will tell you is that overall when you do feel it and touch it you can kind of get a vibe that there's just something more about the usa one in the way that the fit and finish is done there's just a little bit more on the rolled edge of the fretboard. It just feels a little bit more rolled than this. The frets feel just a little bit more polished than these, although these are fantastic. John Mayer is known for having a very good ear and having a fantastic tone, and players really are connected and really driven to his pickups. And I'm really glad that they didn't just make an inexpensive, affordable version of what's in the core model. These pickups look like a real attempt to make something different but familiar, and they sound really good. My first instinct with this guitar was change out the pickups, upgrade some components, and I'm gonna go. But to be honest with you, this guitar sounds really good on its own merit. But I know the big question is definitely Definitely, is it worth buying this instead of buying the USA model? Or <laughs> is it as good as the USA model? And overall, I can't say it's the same as the USA model. Uh, there are things that we've covered in this video. The neck is slightly smaller. The fretboard is slightly flatter. The pickups are slightly hotter. What I can tell you is, is that it's so close and it's so good, I think that if you really wanted to have the Silver Sky experience and you didn't want to pony up almost $3,000 to have that experience with tax, um, then this would be a very, very good instrument. And on that note, I want to thank you all for hanging out to the end of the video. As you know, that really means the most to me. You spent the whole time with me. Till the next time, know your gear.